I feel so privileged to come back to um, my alma mater, Stanford. And uh, this year uh, is the, our 20th uh, reunion period. And um, right after this uh, uh, lecture, I have to go to the uh, business school to have a liquid preference function with all my uh, classmates. So uh, this is my last uh, uh, assignment uh, for, uh, before the liquid preference function. Bear with me that. So, um, uh, today's topic is nanoelectronics in Japan and TIA. Um, how many of you are the engineering school, school backgrounds? Okay, how many of you are industry people? You Industry, business people, business sectors? Ah, I see, okay. Well, uh, today I'll speak to, uh, to the fish how to swim. So uh, it's, it, some of the issues that I'm going to address is easy stuff for you, uh, but bear with me with that. Uh, I'm a government official. I'm now an uh, electric engineer uh, myself, but I, uh, I've been working in the innovation system for uh, 25 years, so I know a little bit about uh, innovation system, as Richard uh, has mentioned about WPI. Um, this uh, uh, job that I'm undertaking about TIA, uh, you know, the open consortium, is a is a first um, um, very important task for Japan to undertake. A uh, very important task at that time of the uh, year. Uh, the, the change from the uh, uh, old type of uh, industry relations to a new type of in industry relationship. So, um, what do you have? A security. Hold on. Something's going on. I'm sorry, I'm not used to this gadget here. Is, is some, something going on in the LSC exec? LSC? Uh, I need technical assistance probably. Um, yeah, operator, can you? Operator, can you? Yeah. Seems to be some kind of warning here. <laughs> it says, yeah, yeah, probably need to turn it off or maybe? Security. Oh, maybe internet? No response. Okay, I'll just turn it off, yes. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay, then. thank you. So, um, when I was born in 1961, computer was like this. Uh, one uh, company making every components. Uh, mainframe was manufactured by one electronic manufacturer. The manufacturer fabricated everything, old wafer, uh, devices, circuit boards, systems, operating system, everything. One manufacturer produced all components. But today, smartphone is one of the uh, computer devices for today. Uh, you have lots of uh, different devices, modules, and different industry behind it. Well, uh, I want to talk about the decline of Japanese uh, electronic products. The return of sales of top five Japanese electronic companies uh, have uh, dropped uh, almost 50% in over past 20 years. Um, the drop of Japanese share, this is a market share here, of DRAMs, uh, panels, a DVD player, car navigation system, um, uh, the drop, the decline of mar Japanese market share of these uh, items have become more and more steep over the years. Uh, this is due to the horizontal division of labor, which was easily available in many of those digital products. Um, and specification of parts and modules became standardized. And this uh, pro led uh, product uh, commoditized faster. This is the global market share of semiconductor industry. Um, as you can see, the, this is, the red is Japanese, this one's US, and these are uh, uh, Europeans and Asians. Now, the Japanese uh, uh, have grown, uh, and uh, near around 1985, uh, there was a, a, a Severe discussion of Japan-U.S. semiconductor negotiation. 
And uh, this is 19, early 1990s. Uh, the US has uh, overtaken Japan. And, and since then, Japan, Japanese uh, uh, share has been declining. So, Kaya-san, I wonder how much of the Japanese peak was DRAM? Here? Yeah, do you think that's mostly DRAM? or And basically, you're also seeing a shift in kinds of chips? Yes, uh, there are shifts in kinds of chips, but the, most of them, I would say, is the DRAM. Uh -huh. And then, after 1903, the Japanese companies continued to drop their market share. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, in 1987, uh, global top three companies, somewhere around here, were Japanese companies. But after 1993, the Japanese companies continued to drop their market share and, and this is the, the current figure, 2012, uh, top five are non-Japanese. And uh, Korean and South uh, Taiwanese companies are increasing their market share. The ultimate scaling and mass production. Um, the cutting edge R&D on LSI uh, foresees that technology generation of sub 10 nanometer design rule will come in less than a decade. It, you probably know about the Moore's uh, theory. And uh, it will hit the uh, physical limit uh, probably within uh, 10 years. And transition to uh, a large scale wafer process is, is no longer an event of the distant future. And so this uh, led to R&D on mass production of ultimately scaled LSIs requiring a huge investment. Um, R&D risk uh, is too high for any single company to take. Uh, you probably know about the ult, um, ultraviolet um, uh, equipments. Uh, these cost uh, more than $1 billion. Uh, the European companies are fabricating those things, the huge machines. Um, now, tough time for Japanese semiconductor industry. Traditionally, Japanese companies uh, were good at uh, what we call suriawase, which means adjusting and uh, uh, integration of downstream technology with upstream technology. Usually it took place in one company. Uh, this was made possible by vertical alliance or in-house uh, vertical alliance product line. Uh, suriawase was useful in the tacit knowledge transfer uh, of each value chain um, and uh, could be sophisticatedly uh, integrated. And it, it was a state of art uh, procedure. But it took uh, time and effort to have the, uh, the real integration. Today's electronics uh, industry uh, demands standard, standardized spe specification of device and module of high quality in short time, uh, in short span of time. Thus, it requires the decision of large equipment investment, hence uh, needs a high volume output in very short time period. In addition to that, in recent years, uh, the, the downstream, uh, for example, the application software or, or networking, those kind of value chain is sucking up a margin of, for investment in semiconductors. So these uh, led to a downfall of Japanese semiconductors in current mar uh, market business uh, trend and atmosphere. To sum that up, it means they're just not fast enough, even though they did really good company internal. Right. right. Adjustments and, and so forth. Yes. Uh, for, uh, as I mentioned, um, the equipment for the uh, 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 for those modules, you know, are so high uh, priced, highly priced, and that you need to have a uh, quick recovery because the the, the the speed is very fast. Yeah. Speed speed of innovation is very fast, and the equipment being so expensive, you need to sell a, a more volume, so high throughputs. Uh, so you need to have a fast decision on large equipment investment and recoup it in a very short time, uh, which is not fit to Suriyawase kind of stuff yeah. because it takes longer time for adjusting and you need to have a standardized, and which 
Surya also doesn't require standardization because it's not modules. It's, it's all in, in house or vertically integrated. Uh, when, when the business uh, environment is more modular and uh, everything becoming standardized and the specification became being standardized, uh, this Surya technology, uh, you know, business uh, practice is no longer applicable. Now, Compounded with that, uh, there was a deadlock of Japanese econ economic industry. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, uh, each technology uh, of a uh, different value chain has become more and more complicated and, and become uh, more, uh, uh, less independent. Proposal by the Japanese Business Federation, there is a, a promotion of Japanese New Deal uh, and the CON, CN, which is called the Council of Competitiveness. Uh, they issued the realization of environment uh, harmonized ubiquitous society. And the large scale budget by METI, uh, Ministry of uh, uh, Export, uh, Economy, Trade and Industry and MEXT, uh, large scale um, government funding was uh, poured in to uh, the R&D of, of new type of open innovation. Now, if you consider the open innovation worldwide, we already have, we also have other countries conducting open innovation in this uh, uh, technology field. Uh, IMAC in Belgium, Minatech in France, and here in States, the IBM uh, and New York State is running this Albany Nanotech Center. And those blue ones are for the power uh, conductors. Uh, Freedom uh, in North Carolina. They're mainly the contractors of the DOD, uh, DARPA kind of stuff. Uh, you have ECP and CPES. Um, Japan uh, has established this TIA Nano, which is the uh, also an open innovation system, both in the nanotech, uh, nanoelectronics, and uh, power electronics. Um, this is the, uh, the Tia Nano and the, the members, Keidan Ren, the, uh, the Japanese Business Federation, AIST, NINS, National Institute of uh, Materials, University of Tsukuba, and uh, KEK High Energy Physics yeah, Institution. I wonder how many people know what Keidan Ren knows. Okay. Okay, so it's a, a big industry federation that really represents kind of business interests in Japan and uh, generally of large corporations. And so that's one of the industry participants in this consortium. AIST is uh, now a kind of set of national laboratories that are all under the umbrella of the Ministry of, Inter of Economy, Trade, and Industry. Trade. NIMS is specific to material science. Mm -hmm. It's also basically money from uh, METI, right? Uh, MEXT, or MEXT. MEXT, okay, so that's education money, but it's material science. Then you've got University of Tsukuba, which is a national university in Japan. And finally, KEK is the High Energy Physics National Research Center. Uh, they have good particle accelerators there. And they okay. have uh, uh, a PF, uh, yeah. uh, the SN, uh, um, photon factory, okay. which is used for the uh, nano, uh, um, nano device scoping yeah. of various things. So these are the people who are playing in this arena. Now, um, Tsukuba, you probably haven't heard about the Tsukuba. Tsukuba is a city. It's a it, it's a uh, artificial city. I, it wasn't there. It's it's a merger of three villages, and uh, a distance from sixty kilometers from uh, Tokyo, and uh, ninety kilometers from Na Narita Airport. Population is about uh, two hundred ten thousand. Uh, researcher about uh, roughly twenty thousand, including various kinds of researchers. Foreign residents, 7,000, 32 nationals and, uh, uh, 32 national laboratories and 300 research institutions. The cabinet of Japan has decided to create this science city, Tsukuba, 50 years ago and concentrated all those national institutions in this little uh, town, 
scuba. And they took $26 billion for investment for the construction of this city. This is, in a sense, very unique, that the government has created a science park. This is really the model for a lot of later science parks. I think Shinshu probably modeled itself on scuba a little bit. Not quite? OK. Now let me show you the um, videos for that. Nanotechnology research and development requires a variety of instruments and many people who have the relevant expertise and skills. This is why many countries have attempted to establish a global center for nanotechnology that combine research institutes and private companies to stimulate personal contacts and information exchange to achieve innovations. The desire to create a global center for nanotechnology in Japan has been the motivation for the establishment of the Tsukuba Innovation Arena, also known as Tia Nano. Tsukuba Science City in Ibaraki Prefecture. This is one of the largest academic cities in the world, where as many as 12,000 researchers are working in over 300 research institutes. A number of the world's leading nanotechnology research facilities are found here. This is, therefore, the best location in Japan for a global center for nanotechnology. The National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology, the National Institute for Materials Science, and the University of Tsukuba, all located in Tsukuba Science City, were instrumental in creating, in 2009, a global center for nanotechnology called the Tsukuba Innovation Arena, Tia Nano. Tia Nano's logo symbolizes the large arena formed by the three institutes for close collaboration. You are now going to see the individual facilities of Tia Nano. These are the three core infrastructures of Tia Nano. The Nanotech Open User Facilities, the Nano Device Research Foundry, and the Networking School of Nanotechnology. First, you will see the major facilities in the Nanotech Open User Facilities. This is an ultra-high magnetic field NMR with the strongest magnetic field in Japan, which is also one of the highest in the world. It is an aggregation of six NMR spectrometers that, as a whole, are indispensable tools for the structural analysis of substances ranging from proteins to solid materials. This is the electron microscope in the high-voltage electron microscopy station this microscope has the highest level of performance and is a powerful instrument for the examination and evaluation of nanotech materials. The nanoprocessing facility has a number of advanced apparatuses for nanoprocessing and measurement. The facility is available for research and development by visiting researchers in various fields. It also provides human resource developments. This positron probe microanalyzer makes it possible to observe defects at the atomic or nanometer level in samples. This exemplifies the outcome of activities for the development of new measurement apparatus. We proceed now to the major facilities in the Nano Device Research Foundry. This super clean room with a floor area of 4,500 square meters is one of the largest clean rooms for research in the world. 
An integrated device demonstration and evaluation line permits the fabrication of integrated circuits with a circuit line width of 45 nanometers on wafers with a diameter of 300 millimeters. You can see now that the N-MEMS foundry consists of a 650 square meter clean room in which nanoprocessing apparatuses for nanoprocessing and evaluating of MEMS have been installed. The foundry provides a continuous operation for the design, test model manufacture and mass production of MEMS. The Advanced Power Electronics Research Center allows operations to carry out the entire process of the test manufacture, demonstration and evaluation of silicon carbide based power devices. Next, we look at the Networking School of Nanotechnology. Education is an indispensable part of the Global Center for Nanotechnology. The University of Tsukuba has been the hub of a nationwide consortium of relevant institutes in an attempt to establish TIA Nano Networking Schools. We have seen the extensive core infrastructure of TIA Nano. These facilities are open to all current and future participants. TIA Nano has already started original R&D projects utilizing its core infrastructure. Six core research domains have been established. We are preparing an overview of the projects that will exemplify the possibilities that TIA Nano has to offer to researchers. The Nano Electronics domain utilizes the Super Clean Room for developing LSIs with very low power consumption. Nano-sized new materials and structures, as well as new principles, should generate IT equipment with low power consumption. This will help create the basic technology required in a low-carbon society. The power electronics domain involves the development of silicon carbide-based power devices for high efficiency. Silicon carbide power devices, which have a far higher performance than conventional power devices, are approaching the stage of commercialization. The NMEMS domain, based on the NMEMS foundry, aims at mass producing MEMS and integrating them into semiconductor circuits. The integration of various MEMS into a single chip will find many applications such as environmental measurement or electric power monitoring. This will be an important technology in a society of ubiquitous information. The purpose of the carbon nanotubes domain is to develop an efficient technology for the mass production of carbon nanotubes. The super growth method has succeeded in obtaining a catalytic efficiency that is several hundred times that of the conventional techniques. The development of applications for carbon nanotubes is proceeding concurrently. The Nano Green Domain is developing new devices that may be useful in a low carbon society, including solar cell, photocatalysis, secondary cell, fuel cell, and so on. It is expected that computational science and experimental techniques will ensure a better understanding of the operating mechanisms of these devices and improvements in efficiency. The target of the nanomaterial safety domain is the evaluation of methods regarding the safety of nanomaterials. A risk assessment report for nanomaterials was published in 2009. The domain is also expected to serve as an information center on the safety of nanotechnology.
Additional core domains may, of course, be established by other researchers. Indeed, the definition of Tia Nano's research domains depends on the interest of the participating researchers. We will now present a historical overview of the establishment. I don't have to talk about the history. <laughs> now, okay. So, um, this is facts and figures of Tiananmen. Um, you have the the project scale is about. Uh, um, 25 billion Japanese yen um, per year, an accumulation of 76. And um, in the five-year term, we, we're envisioning 100 billion J Japanese yen. And we want to have the, the increase of uh, public funding, uh, no, private funding. Currently, it, it's 85% is uh, public funded, uh, national uh, governmental programs. Running, but uh, we're increasing uh, more of the uh, the private uh, consortia, uh, private standalone consortia, and uh, 26 percent. I mean, there are 26 uh, number of uh, pro projects ongoing. Uh, each project having its own consortia. Um, number of industries partners about 128, and we are expecting to have it more than 300. Uh, and uh, here's a, the, the figures with regards to foreign uh, participants. It's still very low, and we want to increase this number. Now, this is Tia's vision of future society. As you have seen in the uh, video clip, we're looking into super low power te technology uh, basis for uh, Internet of Things. Sorry, this is in Japanese, uh, but uh, the, the core technology is here. And it goes on to photonics to, uh, uh, th these are the uh, uh, R&D. Yeah, SCR is your super clean super room. Clean room. Right? Yes, okay. SCR stands for super clean room. This is where all those uh, uh, R&D is happening. Um, and MEMS and uh, silicons and photonics. We will have a green of uh, uh, car sensing. Uh, this is, these are the current business. Smartphones. So the, the, big gray, the big area, the big area there here. is green IT. Yes, green IT and here. And then down south is network uh, connectivity. Yeah, down network at the bottom. Has, yes. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, in the future, we're looking into ubiquitous uh, networking, and uh, which will create green uh, by IT agriculture, energy management system, healthcare, and. Uh, uh, civilian systems and infrastructure civilian systems, all conducted under cloud computing. And we're looking into battery less mobile communication for security, healthcare, energy management. Battery less. Battery less. Yeah. Well, I would say uh, one, let's say one uh, battery cell for a uh, computer or no batteries. Uh, except for the uh, the uh, solar panels, you know, uh -huh. smaller, smaller, and the uh, the uh, civilian systems, for example. You okay. know? So so less uh, less power. Okay. Now green um, green of ICT is required for sustainable ICT society. Currently, um, uh, we're using the uh, the internet about um, in, in year two thousand six. Uh, 637 giga, uh, GP, uh, giga, giga, GPPS, and then in uh, 2025, it will have 190 times more, which would have mean that uh, you have 5.2 times more of the energy consumption, which will lead to uh, 240 billion kilowatt hour, which means that ICT system will consume 20% of total domestic electric power generation, which is a huge amount of energy. So the key issue of green nanotechnology is, is to downsize the energy consumption, um, the, the CPU, the I.O., and the, the, the memory portion, all, all of each 
to be downsized in energy so that you will have uh, at least 1% of the power deduction. So let now, me explain that. These are national projects that are being oh, here. mentioned. Yes. Five, five Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry national projects plus one Ministry of Education national projects. And so they're all addressing uh, green technologies and ICT. Yes. And each of these projects have different consortium members, so different industries, uh, be it uh, uh, horizontal or vertical. I'll talk about it la so later. So that, that's a lot of money in these projects, and they're using the Tia Nano, right? Yes, okay. Tia Nano for, uh, the, uh, to conduct the, those projects. This is basically government-funded projects. Now, you will see all those. Uh, I, th I think the time is running out, so I'll skip some of those slides, but it will be handed out to you. Those are some of the, uh, the, the, the this is TN Nano facilities. This super clean room, um, by the way, is going to be open for uh, easier use uh, by web-based web ap application, and I'll talk that at, at the very end. Now, uh, while you're changing slides, we'll post these slides on our asia.stanford.edu website. We'll be able to see it from the, the course page there. Yeah. This is the, uh, the uh, methodology systems, and uh, uh, you have high mob mobility channel CMOS and low voltage operation, R&D, and back end of line, post silicon, you know, the germanium uh, included uh, CMOS technology. New materials and device for low power nanotech, nanoelectronics. Uh, you know, this is back end here, but uh, not all ordinary back end. It has this atom, atomic switch to have more uh, complicated device here. And you have new materials and also quantum mechanism for the, uh, uh, the memory, the uh, non-volatile memory. And uh, new materials and device for low power nanotechs. Here again, the, the carbon nanotubes are being used and uh, photonics used for the uh, transmission, um, silicon photonics for low power and high speed interconnect. Now, uh, other area, uh, you, you've heard about the power electronics in the video. Uh, silicon carbide is our main target uh, of, of uh, power electronics in Japan now. We have already developed a, a module div uh, of the, uh, the, the, uh, the inverters. Um, See, this is the, the green room here, and then device, and then you have a trial modules and parts, and it goes into systems. Um, see, uh, uh, there are different kinds of uh, uh, company being involved, so it's, there's a vertical alliance within the, uh, this TPEC, the Tsukuba Power Electronic Const Constellation, which is a consortia, which I will show you here. You have private companies of different sources, different uh, value chain, uh, coming together in ICE, ICE being a host of innovation, and you have universities and public institutions into, uh, you know, having exchanges uh, with ICE to have an open innovation here. No government money is funded here, uh, and these are the corporation that is involved in the consortia. As you can see, uh, the different kinds of uh, Corporations, Toyota being here, and some like Torre, it's just a material company. Uh, uh, Tokyo Electron is the, uh, you know, the, uh, the equipment for, um, company. Now, Pi Electronics has a, well, this is a tech issue. Uh, once again, we're on the, this stage of first generation and targeting at this power density, but we have three uh, nodes of uh, um, uh, I mean, vectors of uh, research and development, each having different consortia. And the third generation is looking into very high power density, which will be used for smart grids, et cetera. And the second generation is used for uh, railways. Now, time's running out, so these are carbon nanotubes. You can see the, 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 the slides later. The nano green, which is undertaken in NIMS. Uh, th these are basically the uh, batteries, solar batteries, and uh, 
companies involved. Notice you have uh, Samsung here. The, the foreign companies also involved in this Nano Green consortia. Skip this. And MEMS, uh, don't have much time for that. Uh, Nano material. We're not that tight on time. We go really? until 5.30. Oh, 5.30? Okay. Yeah. Well, I thought you wanted uh, 30 minutes of discussion time. Yeah, we do. Time. <laughs> so, we do but... Okay. All right. Uh, okay, let me focus here on the School of Nanotechnology. Uh, it is very important uh, that uh, research and development uh, will take care of uh, human resource development. And the uh, University of Tsukuba is becoming a vehicle for introducing many of the, uh, the, uh, the education side and bringing in students into this consortia, into this TIA arena. And many of the students get degrees uh, utilizing those facilities. And, and uh, before postdoc uh, uh, graduate school activities. How do the students actually go out? Is this internships in the companies? Or are they really working in a university lab under a professor, but with government money? Different modes. Um, okay. Not in the government uh, uh, projects that I mentioned here. Uh, there are, uh, uh, the students don't go into those things normally, uh -huh. but uh, uh, for example, we have uh, uh, summer schools uh, for nano, uh, power electronics, nano electronics, carbon electronics, all those kinds of things. And also the NIMS, uh, one of the, uh, the institution, actually runs the, the graduate school, uh, one course of, of graduate school per se. And uh, uh, 54 uh, re uh, researchers from AISD are participating in the graduate course of Tsukuba University. Uh, and you also have other universities joining in to Tsukuba, uh, through Tsukuba to our institutions for uh, internships sometimes, and also the, uh, the, the graduate works, the doctoral works. Mm -hmm. yes. So, um, as a conclusion, uh, Japanese semiconductor industries in, in, in a very uh, downfall, as you have seen, but TIA, Open, open R&D Center uh, for New Nanotech Innovation is there to try to bring up a, a new uh, architectural innovation uh, and which will nullify this uh, uh, game plan as of today and create a new uh, game plan uh, for uh, a new architecture, uh, the architectural innovation for new products. Um, super low power IT is the key, uh, which we will create various new values of future society. And innovation for super low power IT technology, which we are uh, aiming at, requires the integration of diverse industry players. As I mentioned, uh, there are different kinds and different players, uh, both uh, bottom, you know, material sciences and, and to the uh, and the user side, like uh, uh, railways or even accelerator uh, companies or uh, um, uh, various kinds of uh, software ap application as well. Um, so you do require integration of diverse industry players. Um, collaboration among cooperation in pre-competitive phase at the innovation hub, uh, AISD, uh, uh, TIA. Um, but uh, as it becomes more competitive, it's, it's very difficult to control. Um, each uh, consortia has each uh, separate rules uh, for uh, the uh, inventions and also IP patents and all that. Um, I can give you more detail about that, but uh, sorry, we're almost near the time. Um, collaboration between Innovation Hub and Academia for uh, future uh, uh, technology resource, and also future human resource is very uh, critical. Um, that's why I'm asking the, uh, no, I'm going all over the world um, and together with the, uh, the scientists to enlarge the, the scientific phase in the academia phase, in the basic science phase, so that we can bring in more of the new ideas into, the, uh, into this hub and to have R&D or the more further a future uh, technology development. And this is the last slide, a recent advertisement. Um, I mentioned that there, the, the facilities like super, uh, super Clean Room is open for use, but uh, uh, we have made it more uh, available to everybody 
in the world, open and easy utilization method uh, of the facilities. Uh, it's web best application method and no joint R&D agreement necessary. And uh, uh, intellectual pro property uh, basically belongs to, prime, uh, to, the, uh, to the user. Strict confidentiality and ICED uh, uh, technical assistance uh, service being available, all on a fee basis. And um, there's an American company uh, called TEI, and uh, it has its subsidiary who know uh, our facility very well, can do the consulting work uh, for usage. If you're interested, that's one way of doing, uh, utilizing our facility through the consultant. So okay. that's about Thanks it. For your comments. Thank you very we'll much. Do some Q and A. So I, before we do Q and A, I want to point out that Professor Yoshio Nishi here at Stanford is a senior oh, yes. advisor to this Tio Nano. So if you see some things on that last slide about you know users owning the IP and so forth. Some of it's kind of similar to what we're doing in the Stanford nanofabrication facility. And there may be uh, you know, some similar ideas floating around now. But I really do want to point out that this is really different from the whole way it used to be in Japan. Yeah. It used to be you would not have industry and university and government collaborating in anything like this. Uh, and the idea of having, you know, universities doing training programs in an organization, in a location that is basically funded through a different ministry, mm -hmm. nah, wouldn't happen. Uh, I want to ask you, sure. you mentioned these other global centers of nanotechnology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yes. mentioned in Grenoble, France, uh, yeah. the National French Lab has started this Minatech. Minitech, and yes. up in Belgium is IMEC, which is a really big semiconductor foundry. Mm -hmm. We've also got the one in Albany, New York, that's kind of joint between IBM and, and SUNY Albany. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, how are these different from each other? Uh, what Good is uh, sort of Tia Nano's kind of okay. unique position in the middle of all of this? Well, I would say three things. Um, one uh, is that Tia Nano covers all kinds of uh, 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 products line. You know, uh, um, we even uh, take care of uh, MEMS and uh, carbon nanotubes, and even the batteries. Uh, the so it's 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 a larger consortium than I think the Minatech or uh, IMEC or even Albany. Um, uh, that's one thing. And number two, I think it's. Uh, similar to Minatech, where uh, it's it's a com, uh, it's a government-led uh, uh, program. Minatech is a very concise city in, uh, in Grenoble, where you have Leti, the uh, the CA uh, organization, and also the university there, strongly supporting the 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 activities. So I think it has somewhat resemblance with uh, Minatech here. IMEC, uh, although very popular, um, uh, it is more on the uh, 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 driven by the IMEC consortia itself. I mean, the the consortium, consortium of the companies, the companies uh, and also the IMEC itself, mm -hmm. and rules the, the all uh, the rules of, for example, IP delivery systems and IP. Uh, you know, the membership is very important. Uh, and uh, it's basically IMEC is uh, bask, um, having uh, uh, leadership, taking uh, leadership on all those projects. Whereas Tia Nano, um, uh, if somebody, a group of people want to do something and the government is going to fund, and they can do it here. And also it's open for open f uh, utilization, which is uh, not common in uh, many of the, uh, the, uh, the consortia if they are not member of that consortia. Uh, those, the blue stars, those are power uh, semiconductor uh, um, uh, consortia. Uh, Freedom is very advanced. Uh, it's basically driven in DOD. So, uh, Albany here, it's basically IBM and uh, New York State University. Um, it's a huge compound here, but uh, um, not quite sure how much outside New York people can take advantage of this uh, area. Uh, 
state has a, a somewhat a restriction. Um, I, I, not, I wouldn't say restriction, but uh, uh, have uh, favoritism over the, uh, the New York State uh, corporations, etc. One last question. Yes. Is Tiananmen an ongoing project, or is there a plan to say the current funding will stop after five years or ten years or something? Mm. Um, as I said before, uh, it's, there's a midterm. Mm -hmm. um, uh, five years. Uh, so it's probably pretty going soon. Forward. Yeah, yeah going forward. Um, we will need. There you go. Okay, we have a midterm plan. Uh, uh, we'll see how this figure will turn out uh, mm -hmm. within a year or two. And uh, the projects are ongoing, uh, they're long term. So we can't stop uh, the Tiananmen Initiative uh, uh, when the projects are ongoing. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can't just stop uh, uh, right away. But uh, um, uh, as I see, uh, more and more projects are increasing in numbers. And so there is a tendency that we will grow more. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK, thanks. Let's open the floor. Sean? So those are government funding uh, project, what is the role of TIA? And uh, how, what's the funding mechanism? Who decides what project to pursue and the budget distribution? Who okay. decides what Who decides project? What project? Yeah. Uh, the, the project uh, is basically funded from the government. Uh, unless the, it, it's it's a private one, now the consortium and like a, a TPEC is a private consortia, so TPEC itself ch makes decisions. But uh, government-funded projects, like I mentioned, uh, some of the projects you've seen, uh, five plus one, for example, those are government-funded projects. So the the funder uh, uh, controls the, uh, the the money, okay, and the members to be involved. They will cons uh, consult with uh, various companies. So things like how use of use of the lab. How, how, do you how was the project uh, proposed? Is that the funding agency proposed that, or from your institution? Uh, it varies. It, it varies. Yes, uh, because uh, Max uh, is basically proposal based, whereas Meti is more like a, a you know, top down mechanism. Uh, there is one called uh, First. It's a top thirty. Scientists uh, selected by CSTP, the Council of Science and Technology Policy, select the 30 uh, top researchers in Japan, uh, from which I think five uh, were selected uh, to utilize Tia Nano. Uh, so the five of, of 26 uh, uh, top 30 projects. Yeah. So, so far, Tia Nano has not had to choose between Project A and Project B in terms of. You can use thirty percent of the lab, and exactly. you can't use yes, it. yes. Well, Tia Nano is a is is a, more like a platform itself, where uh, if if there's a funding there, then 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 people can gather up and utilize the facility, and also our know how accumulated in, in, into that compound. You see, and also uh, the other than project, I mentioned about this uh, open utilization. Um, Companies and researchers can come and utilize our facilities and come and utilize our know-how. You see, this is, I think, uh, one of the way to cultivate more you know, participants and to have uh, a new possible candidates for a consortium member. Is that first come, first served? No, uh, uh, well, we, <laughs> you mean the utilization? Yeah, if you do um, a web application, yeah. you apply for a particular time or something. Uh, hopefully, we can do first come first uh -huh, uh, basis. Uh -huh. But uh, okay. uh, we are starting off from this November. See how many uh, customers are coming. Oh, that's right. It starts on it November starts one. It starts on November okay. one. So, okay. Um, okay, good. You next. Why are the um, the Japanese government and other companies are now focusing on the uh, nano technologies? Uh, I mean. Strengths uh, do they have in, in that space? You mean nanotechnology itself? So? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, for example, uh, so you're really thinking more about like the five big national projects from METI and the one big national project from MEXT. How did the Japanese government decide that those were critical areas? Oh, you mean the choosing of the projects? Uh, project or why bother with nanotechnology? 
Why bother with nanotechnology? It's simple, because we have industry there. And uh, if you look at the, uh, the global market share of, uh, uh, of, for example, materials, see, still the Japanese are uh, dominant in materials of wafer process. Uh, materials for assembly and testing process, we still have uh, uh, marketing power. And uh, for example, production equipment, we still have uh, uh, marketing power in the global market. So Japanese uh, industries as a whole, uh, although semiconductors is, is decreasing, we still have the industry base that can support the semiconductor industry. And, and, and uh, in addition to that, uh, as I said before, the, uh, the greener IT is a social requirement for our future. You know, see, as our uh, demographic becomes more aged, and as we need more energy for our other purposes, you know, green, green ICT is uh, something that, uh, it, it, it's, it's a um, prerogative. Uh, is that the right word? Yep. Yeah, it's a prerogative for a Japanese society. So it's, it's the government deciding that we need this uh, uh, industry to, to stay and to create new value for a future society. That's political reason. Thanks. Uh, I visited uh, Skoba quite a few years ago, and I was very impressed by that place because you go to that place, it almost looks like uh, Los Angeles. If you do. Yeah. <laughs> then I know many Japanese. Uh, colleagues work in the uh, semiconductor area. So I asked them, why don't you use this school? Mm. They said, well, nobody wants to leave Tokyo. Mm. School is too far from mm. Tokyo. <laughs> so do you still have a problem to attract a real good person come to school? Mm. Mm. Yeah, good point. Um, probably this slide explains a little. See, uh, Tsukuba, it's, as I mentioned, it's an artificial city. Is that, the cabinet made a decision to concentrate everybody here. Now, it used to be a th three villages and uh, nothing here. It's a rural area. And uh, before Tsukuba Express was there, there was no uh, railroad transportation to Tsukuba till I believe early 2000, uh, uh, early 2000s. Yeah, 2001, One something, or two, around, something then, around that. Yeah. yeah. Till then, there was only bus transportation only. And people had to, you know, uh, what do you call Tanshinfuni? In, in, oh, you, you go <laughs> and you leave your family yeah, living somewhere yeah, else. Yeah. And, so and they you would stay go, here, yes. Yeah. You see? So uh, people did The families want to would go. live in Tokyo yeah. and the children would go to Tokyo yeah. schools and they would go out yeah. and work in school right. and go home on right. the weekends. And it was difficult for uh, people living in Tokyo to commute to Tsukuba. Right now, because of this Tsukuba Express, I commute, uh, although it, it takes two hours for me. <laughs> uh, it's painful still, but it's better than uh, three hours or four hours. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, uh, and on, along this Tsukuba Express line, there are more houses. New, new, uh, quickly, uh, there's urbanization is happening in this area. The population is growing in this area on, along Tsukuba Express. So people who are working in Tsukuba buy houses along this Tsukuba Express line, which is uh, convenient for a commute within 30 minutes. And you can also go to Tokyo. So you have more and more people coming in to Tsukuba uh, from outside Tsukuba. Pr previously, uh, it was basically people living in Tsukuba. So it's changing. I think there's also more things growing up around Tsukuba than mm. there used to be. So University of Tokyo now has a big campus in Kashiwa. Yes, yeah, yes. That is not it's, too it's far along, away from Tsukuba. It's all along this line, yes. Yeah. Tokyo University has opened a huge um, uh, campus here at Kashiwa, which is about 20 minutes from Tsukuba city. Actually, you first. Uh, so at the beginning of your presentation, you talk about the downfall of the uh, Japanese semiconductor yeah. uh, industry. And one of the reasons uh, you explained uh, is the Sudiyawase mm -hmm. way of doing mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. like it doesn't really allow quick decisions mm -hmm. involving large investment. So how do you see that problem being solved? Ah, well, uh, the game plan has changed, as I mentioned. You know, Sudiyawase 
for uh, current game plan with modular uh, devices, it's not applicable. And uh, uh, fast decision for a large investment is needed, where Surya say is not, not really up to that. But I think this Surya say the, the integration of uh, various different kinds of technology is very essential for R&D for new architectural changes. You know, architectural innovation, you, you have a completely new set of architect. You, you need to, uh, it's before modulation, modularization, I think. And that's the area that we are focusing on. Okay, it will become modularized later, perhaps. But at this moment, we will create values uh, with, with this uh, vertical integration of different uh, industry players, different techniques, different engineering, and different value chain, from different value chain, to come onto this open hub and to create a new architect. This is what we're fo uh, focusing as an R&D center. So it's a concept behind yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, concept yeah, behind that, yes. And, but for, for Japanese semiconductor companies, they will need to restructure the companies and move away from Suriyawase. No, 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 no. Uh, at, at the beginning, they'll have a first mover's advantage if they're in that consortia, you see. Clearly, they'll have more uh, advantage than those companies who are not in that Suriyawase process because they know what, what's, what's needed the specification that will be need, required. Now, modularization will take uh, later down the road. But the first move of advantage is when, when you're there at the R&D phase. And they will get to know more of what's required on the upper stream or downstream or uh, uh, upstream uh, of, of the technology. That's where we're investing on. Uh, comment on this? Sure, okay. go ahead. So, way back in the mid-1990s, Professor Nonaka wrote a very famous book called The Knowledge Creating Company. And it was all about the flow of knowledge inside Japanese companies and why that made them so competitively strong back in the 70s and 80s. And there, he distinguished two kinds of knowledge, explicit knowledge that you could mm -hmm. write down, codify, and what he called, what did he call it? Tacit I'm knowledge. Uh, tacit knowledge, thank you. Uh, that really was sort of what people knew. And it was because they were in the same organization mm -hmm. that they could interact with each other away from the surface. And by being in proximity to each other, they could do a lot of knowledge exchange. And at the early stages of a technology wave, that kind of frequent adjustment, the awase, uh, yeah, part suri -awase. of suri -awase is really adjustment, adjustment. is essential. What happens as the technology matures is it standardizes. Mm -hmm. Once it standardizes, it becomes price competition. And so, of course, you can't keep up the same old pattern of knowledge flow. It becomes too high a trans transaction cost. So uh, what they're doing is they're trying to create a new place for people to come from different companies for these really early stage uh, early in the technology wave kind of areas where you do need a lot of adjustment. coordination and adjustment and things that never reach the surface. The difference is that now you've got people not from one company, but from different value right. chains. Right. And even from the government as well as the university, all mm -hmm. involved in this process. Mm -hmm. If you put it in bad terms, they're throwing everybody in one room right. and right. seeing what happens. <laughs> But uh, they are doing projects and getting projects done. And this atomic switch that you mentioned, was that done through Tiananmen, or was that, did that uh, kind of that, exist that, beforehand? That came from uh, parts of the uh, Tiananmen institution. Yes. Okay. The NIMS okay. had the uh, atomic. Okay, so it really is a new kind of approach to doing things, especially in Japan. Thank you. Ed. Um, I, I occasionally look at the ITRS roadmap, and um, I'm, I'm really curious. Do you have a sense of when some of these advanced technologies will actually become production worthy and maybe replace uh, current ones? Uh, for instance, if you look at CMOS, CMOS is pretty quickly running out of mm -hmm. out of headroom, right? Uh, Intel style for microprocessors mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. memory companies. 
And one other question. I noticed you don't seem to um, have on this a transition to where we might switch photons instead of switching electrons. It looks like everything in these projects is still switching electrons. Any thoughts? Well, photons, uh, we're doing that. Um, I think I, um, I sort of sw uh, skipped some of the slides, but... Uh, yeah, because we, we use the video instead. We use the video instead, but there was a photon silicon project. Um, sorry, um, it sh should... Um, this one? Yeah, the right-hand side? Oh, yeah. yeah, this is, the, uh, this is the, the, the portion that we were using. It's on the, uh, on the, the four times four metric switch for dynamic optical path. And also the transmission uh, uh, with the silicon photonics for low power, high, high speed. So the photon, photon process is very important. That will decrease the, uh, the power consumption and also enlarges the, uh, the speed. And we, we, we recognize that, and we, we have uh, several projects with, with that, uh, photonics, silicon photonics. And your first question is that when I see the change of, uh, of this paradigm, this is a very difficult question because uh, um, uh, I'm not a prophet myself. <laughs> but uh, uh, you can see uh, that uh, the current trend of this uh, Moore, you know, the integration Moore's law, Moore's law is pretty much the, the same um, um, paradigm gameplay, I think. Whereas these new devices are architecturally different. Like having a uh, memory and the, uh, the, the CMOS being, you know, intertwined and uh, uh, see if there is a, a, the upgrade in energy consumption. Uh, so those new devices, if that comes in play, you will have different kind of uh, uh, modules being created. Yes. Now, whether that comes, when that comes, it depends on the, uh, the, the effort of the consortia. That's why the consortia included, includes all different kinds of uh, uh, value chain people, because they want to know what would come uh, as a device that is so different from the current game plan, so that they can adapt more to that the new you know, devices. Is Tia Nano uh, actively trying to establish like an office to market technologies? that are being developed there, do you leave that to the users? Hmm. Users being who? Well, like these national projects. They each have their own IP structure. Yeah, they have each own IP but structure. But when you open it out, what's going to happen okay. you, from November 1? What, what, uh, what happens within the consortia? Uh, normally, the IP rules uh, of average consortia is like this. Um, uh, no. Um, no, D1, sorry. Yeah, this one. Okay. The average technology management within consortia is that like this. Most corporations have their own in-house uh, capability, you know, R&D center themselves. And they, they don't do R&D for what they're doing outside. You know, like uh, the, the open innovation, the, they, uh, they choose the, uh, the arena where they feel very weak at. But once the inventions are made, it will be brought back to, the, uh, to their own corporate R&D uh, laboratories and will be tested further simultaneously. And uh, IP rules differ among the consortia, but usually IP is patented by most contributed party uh, uh, but the member, all members have MFE status, most favored entity status, for implementation right granted to all members. So all members can you, uh, you know, simultaneously develop utilizing that the IP with the, uh, with the most, the, the cheapest price. So what happens is that in the consortia, they do the R&D, but it will not be to the end of the product line. Still, you do need to reproduce and test various things uh, in-house. They do that in-house. So it's, it's this you know, environment of in-house, ex-house, uh, no, uh, 
extramural, uh, no, extramural is the right word, uh, open innovation and in-house R&D, you know, going simultaneously uh, and, uh, hand in hand. And how you manage this, uh, you know, the, the personal, for example, uh, rotation, or, you know, how you manage the alliance within the consortia, you know, more deeper alliance, for example, it all depends on corporate strategy. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Go ahead. So, um, again, going back to CDO, I said, if it's, like you're saying, if, if it's within the same company, then people feel very free to share yeah. knowledge and ideas. And in, in this case, it's not going to be the same because you always have the IP issue. Right? So, are you doing anything to address that, to encourage people to share? Or people just realize that they cannot do everything by themselves, so they have to come to uh, an environment like this to, to do uh, high-end R&D. You're saying that uh, uh, within the consortia, you, 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 what you're suggesting is, is uh, some so ways to encourage? This tier nano yeah, platform, yeah. do you do anything to encourage mm -hmm. free sharing of knowledge by people from different companies? Yeah, within the consortia. Uh, you see, Tia Nano is a hip, hip, big under one roof kind of consortia. But within that, there is segmentation of consortia uh, depending on the projects and depending on the aim and the end products they're envisioning, right? Now, within those groups, se segments, those different consortia, they have their own rule. And uh, the most average uh, consortia rule is like this. And they, they share their knowledge there. It's true, yes. They, sometimes they bring, they bring in their own knowledge as a common basket. Yes, there are some consortia who does that. And uh, there are some companies who want to back off a little bit, but want to have some new inventions. It's a corporate strategy, right? And uh, how much money you put onto that consortia, that's also corporate strategy. It depends on what the corporate strategy is. So basically, this TIA Nano and this consortia, uh, uh, they use those consortia for their own strategy. So it's, it's necessary for corporates to have clear strategy for R&D and the product uh, end line, end zone, and what they want to do, accomplish. If, if they have some, some envision, then they will utilize these consortia for their own profit, which they couldn't have done in-house because they didn't have expertise. Get the point? I'd like to readdress that, uh, that issue. Essentially, what we have is you develop a technology with multiple companies in the consortium. Who owns the intellectual property or who has the right to use it? Each company has different contributions, like the uh, semi tech in, tex uh, in Texas. Yeah, so that, I think that's what your question is. <coughs> who, how the intellectual property is being shared? Yeah, that's not really a Tia Nano problem. That's more of a problem of the individual research projects, the big national projects. And it is. It's typically IP is granted some sort of a most favored entity status will be given to every industrial Everyone. member of the yes. consortium. Yeah. One reason this is not a bigger problem is because most of this is pre-competitive research. This is research that's so early you'll get more academic right. articles than you will patents. Right. But uh, it is something that they will let the individual users deal with IP based on whatever that user's consortium, yeah, yeah. you know, is uh, whatever they're stating. Consortia decides the ownership of the IP in invention based on the contribution. But that's actually an old pattern in Japan. It's been that way ever since they started yeah, doing national yeah. projects. That's right. Uh, so... This is basically what's different about this is Tia Nano offers this platform yes. that lets people keep their own yeah, IP yeah, without right. any trouble. Exactly. Whereas iMac, for example, they have their own rules for game plan. Uh, that's what I heard. Uh, they don't yeah. let the consortia decide, but they have their own rules of the house. That's probably somewhat different from iMac and uh, the it's Tia. It's a Nano. real EU thing. EU, EU thing, EU yes, funded. yes. Uh, I think we're going to have to close up the formal part of the program. I have one last question sure. I really want to ask. So Japan is under heavy government debt. Yeah. Uh, even worse than the U.S. 
is Japan going to be able to continue funding this kind of advanced research? Mm. <laughs> we want to. <laughs> as long as the taxpayer uh, is willing to accept the outcome. I think it's, uh, it's government and also the, uh, the, the, the Tiad Nano members need to be uh, aware of accountability to the taxpayers. You know, we need to bring out uh, the results and visible to the taxpayers to show that uh, the, the, the money is being utilized and pr making progress in um, pr produces. Uh, some of them uh, already products uh, came into commercialized. Some still in process. But I think it is uh, very critical for our researchers and as an institution per se, or the group per se, to be more accountable uh, to the taxpayers not to the politicians only, but to also the older individual taxpayers, that this is something that is uh, for the future of the, of, of the country per se. And not for the industry, uh, well, itself, but for the society. So as I mentioned before, it's a ubiquitous, greener society. This is something that we're looking as a, a, a societal benefit. And uh, green ICT is a crucial area, element for that. And we want to prove that. As long as this theory is being uh, uh, explored and being explained uh, and being convinced, I think the funding would continue. Thank you. It's a great session. Thank you very much. Thank you.